evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening, my brothers and my sisters. We are grateful to God to be here one more time. To God be the glory for the things he has done and is doing. And you and I can all say at the same time, hallelujah, and thank God for all of his many blessings. Welcome tonight, you that are on Zoom, you that are on um, conference call, and you that are uh, with us by way of Facebook. We certainly appreciate your presence. We appreciate your participation on this Bible study night. We have a mighty word uh, from our Lord. Uh, but before we get there, we want to have a word of prayer. And they will enter into our Bible study. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we thank you for this privilege to come before your people, presenting your holy word. We pray that you will speak to us and that you will speak through us. Use us, O oh God, as instruments of honor that your name will be lifted up. Forgive us of all of our manifold sin. Own and love us as your own children. We give your name glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for what you're going to do on tonight. Prick hearts and minds. Receive your word with gladness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you, my brothers. We did, and sisters, we did want to congratulate Brother, uh, Brother Phillips, Reverend Phillips. Uh, we understand he was made the pastor voted the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Pacific Grove. And we want to say congratulations to Pastor Phillips, and we will be working with him uh, as the Lord sees fit. But thank God that they have a man to stand in John's shoes. Amen. Tonight's uh, lessons uh, to the officers, ministers, and mothers, and to each of you, the, the tonight's lesson uh, comes from Genesis 21st chapter. We are continuing in our study of the life of Abraham, the, the, the wonderful, the tremendous, the awesome life of Abraham. And, and we've learned uh, Abraham is not much different than us. He had a personal relationship with God, but he wasn't Superman. He wasn't Jesus Christ. He was an ordinary man, but he had tremendous faith in our God. And so we want to continue in this study as we enter into uh, 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 the 21st chapter of Genesis. We want to begin looking at verse 1 through 7. This one we titled tonight, God Will Come Through. God Will Come Through. And that, that, that's a mighty good word for everyone, that God will come through. Sooner or later, soon and very soon, God will come through. The apprehension, the, the concern, all of the fear, the uneasiness, and all of the worry was all in vain. The sleepless nights, the restless days. I, I know the wait seems long, and it even seems lingering, and, and even, even longer than it ought to be. But I'm here to remind everyone, God will show up and fulfill what he has promised. So brothers and sisters, the promise of the Lord that you've been waiting on, don't give up. No, no, don't throw in the towel. Don't surrender. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your, your breakthrough, you know, if you depend on men, 
men will let you down. Men will disappoint you and disenchant you. They will fail and frustrate you, causing you much aggravation. But we can truly say that we are mighty thankful that our God is not like men. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that God is not like men because our God will come through. May, may not be when you want him to, it, but it will be when you least expect it. God will come through. Amen? I, 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 can, uh, I can hear uh, Abraham and Sarah as, 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 as they are shouting out with glee. Finally, finally, thank you, Lord, for fulfilling your promise. You, you got to remember, here are two senior citizens who have many more better days behind them than they do in front of them, living on the promise of God. Many, many years have come and gone. They've been anticipating their breakthrough for oh so many years, and finally, the day has come forth. This 21st chapter, we all, we, we all know this to be the chapter when Isaac, the child of promise, has finally been born. The long looked for uh, child has come at, at last. The vision concerning the seed is for an appointed time and now at the end it speaks and God's word does not lie. We've never saw anyone in the Old Testament brought into the world with such tremendous expectation as was Isaac. No, 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 no. That's because Isaac was a thin type of Christ. He was a type of Christ, that seed which the holy God had so long promised and that holy men so long for expected. So he was a type of Christ. Look, let, 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 let's go through these verses real quick, if you would. Verses 1 and verse 2. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had <clears throat> said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham, a son in his old age, at the set time which God had spoken to him. I, I call that little, little, little segment anticipation apprehended. The mission that God set out has been accomplished. Fulfillment of the faithful has finally come to fruition. The contract that God established had been completed. This was a, a fulfilling uh, a completion of the promise of God in the conception and in the birth of Isaac. This, this Isaac birth was a, a birth of the confidence of the promise. The Lord visited Sarah in mercy, as he said. And I like that because it reminds us and lets us know that no word of God will ever fall to the ground. It does not fall in defeat. For God is faithful that he has promised. Our God is faithful. The God's, his faithfulness is the strength and the support of his people's faith. We don't lean on our faith, but our faith is in our God. He was born, Isaac was born at the set time which God had spoken. 
God is always punctual. It was set. God always is on time. He promised that it would happen, but he did not say when it would be. He did not set a day, a time, a second. He did not set anything special or summer, a season, a winter. He did not say latter part of the year, early part of the year. He did not even say at a celebrational time. But at God's set time. Amen. It, it, was, it was confidence in that promise that God had confidence. And you and I can find confidence in that. But it was also in the control of the promise. Sarah, by faith, received strength to conceive. It, 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 she was 90 plus years when she conceived. Now, I, I've never gave birth, but I've seen the struggle. I've seen the strain. I've seen all of the energy that it called to push that child it, 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 the, the sentence was passed on Abraham and Sarah. They were past childbirth. They were dead physically. But they were enabled to give a, a conception to conceive and to give birth to a child by the power of God. God enables us, he enables you and I to fulfill his promise in the life of others around us. God has given you the power to be a witness. You ought to be a viable, victorious witness that God can save anybody. Don't ever think you don't have a testimony. Don't ever believe you can't win nobody because you aren't that biblically strong or you aren't that biblically uh, 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 knowledgeable. Listen, God has put in you the victory and the power to share who he is. And so we must not give up. You, you must not say you are unable. Yes, Okay, let's just say you are unable. Well, it's the power of God in you that enables you. You step out on his word. You step out in the power of our God. You step out. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching tonight in the power of God. I've been enabled to teach. It's not Dunham. It's not Anthony's insight. This is not Dunham's dynamics. This is by the enabling power of God. What you do when you teach, when you preach, when you sing, when you testify, it's because you've been enabled. Abraham and Sarah were dead, but they were enabled to deliver a child. Amen. She was, she, she was able to to deliver that child. Verse number three, four, and five. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, who sought Sarah, bore to him Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. I call that pericope alliance acknowledge. God uh, had given him this child by promise and now by presence. Abraham could have easily shouted about it and forgot what he had said. He, should, he could have been so happy he could have forgotten to fulfill what he promised. Uh -huh. But Abraham was obedient. He acknowledged his alliance. 
His obedience to God was concerning his son predicated on God fulfilling his promise. Look at this commemoration. He named his son. God directed Abraham to name his son Isaac as a memorial, as a commemoration. It was Isaac name means laughter. Abraham office was that he would give his son the name. He could have called him Abraham Junior. He could have called him Abraham the second. He could have allowed himself to be remembered through his lineage. But he stuck to what God had told him to do. Why was Isaac naming laughter? It was because he was born and birthed to old, to senior individuals. When you see someone senior now have a child, you literally giggle yourself silly. You look at somebody 90 years old trying to have a child and you go to laugh and think they done lost their mind. But this name, every time people would say his name, it was to bring about laughter because it brought about joy. It, it brought about joy. He, he, he circumcised his son. He circumcised, which means he covered his son. He commemorated his son, and he also covered his son. The circumcision implied sealing a covenant relationship between Abraham and Isaac and God. He sealed his son. He could have easily thought, I don't want to hurt my son because circumcision is so bloody. I don't want to hurt my son because circumcision is so painful. I don't want to disfigure or harm my son physically. But this could not be forgotten. This could not be omitted. This could not be ignored because it signified a personal relationship between Isaac and God. And it commemorated what the relationship was between Abraham and his God. He remembered to obey his God. Then look at verse number 6 and 7. We almost home. Never forget. Never forget. Before we do six and seven, never forget. Never forget. Never forget what you owe God. You owe God to teach your children about who he is. Don't ever forget that. You owe it. You even owe it to your children. And you owe it to your grandchildren to train them up. In the things of God. You ought to put more God in them than you do anything else. They ought to know how to lean on God. I always tell the story. I, I, my dad never uh, uh, did much in, in, the, in the area, in the arena of visiting us while we were a part of the sporting world. We were basketballers and footballers and track men and baseball, we even played soccer. We were able to do all of the sporting, even foot, everything you can put out there. But none of us can ever say daddy played favors. He didn't go to nobody's football, basketball, nothing. All I can remember when my daddy, as a little boy, was him and his head in that Bible. I remember how he would read that Bible or study that Bible and how he would keep his face in the book. That's when Facebook came from. He kept his face in the book. And if, if, if our children would see us put more into the, our relationship with God, if they see how we stay committed and connected to the word of God, they will see that 
fire burning within us and they too will be compelled to come to know about who that God is. They, 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 you teach them now and when they go away, they will return. But don't ever forget, put it in them right while they are young. Verse 6 and 7, and Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. Isn't that something? God hath made me to laugh and all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. I entitled this one, The Amazement Admitted. This blew Sarah's mind. She, she was joyful. In fact, she celebrated the enjoyment. The Bible says, verse 6, God has made me to laugh. He has given me both a reason to rejoice and a heart to rejoice. God uh, bestows mercies upon his people to encourage them to be joyful while they are in service for him. So brothers and sisters, never forget, whatever the circumstances of your joys may be, always consider who the author and finisher of your joy really is. Never celebrate anything or any person other than the, the, the Christ we serve. I thank my God for all the many blessings, but I always remember that it comes from the Lord. Never forget to acknowledge the author. She says, my heart is filled with joy. Mercy has been shown to, towards me. And it always adds more joy to mercy when there's been a longer waiting period. The longer you wait for it, the more you appreciate it. You ever, you ever looked at that? The longer you wait for it, the more you'll appreciate it. Look at our children. All they have to do is cough and point at something and we down at the store or on the internet purchasing anything that we think they can so desire but you'll notice they don't enjoy it they don't appreciate it they just as soon move on to the next thing why because they didn't have to work for it they didn't have to wait on it learn to teach them how to work for it don't just go out and purchase that thing. You can't buy love. You can't, you can't purchase their, you can't even purchase their affections. Not even their appreciation. Because most time you got, before you hand it to them, you got to hold on to it and say, now what are you supposed to say? You ought not ever have to tell your child to say thank you. You ought not ever have to tell, remind them to say thank you. But that's what the state we've fallen into. But God knows when he deals with us, he knows the longer we wait, the more we anticipate, the more we appreciate. Oh, Israel prayed for 400 years. They waited on the Lord to open doors 400 years. And when God opened the door, them rascals wanted to go back in the Egypt land. God knows his children. So you got to learn how to understand when he opens a door, thank him. When he makes a way, thank him. Learn to celebrate who he is and what 
he has done. She says, and when I laugh, everybody around me going to laugh. <laughs> and laughter is funny. It, laughter is catching. Laughter, you, 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 laughter is, you, you, you see somebody start giggling, and before you know it, everybody in the room don't even know what's going on, but they are laughing. They are bent over, knee slap laughing. They are having a good old time. Why? Because, because somebody started laughing. So Sarah's saying, because I'm laughing, I'm joyful, I'm enjoying what God have done. Everybody else. And that's how it ought to be, brothers and sisters. Your joy that you express in your heart is catching. Just like sour grapes is catching. If you got a negative, nasty, gnarly, no good, mean spirit, that's catching. But when you enjoy the things of God, you wake up with a smile on your heart. You wake up with joy in your heart. You wake up with your eyes lifted up to the hills from which cometh your strength. When you wake up with joy, those around you will see it and they too will catch on and become joyful. She woke up with enjoyment and she had astonishment. Look what she thought. Sarah said that Sarah should give suck to a child. That Sarah should be strong enough to birth a child. Sarah should be strong enough to conceive and birth a child. But Sarah said, I've gone past conception. I've gone beyond birthing. I've moved to the nursing stage. She's letting the child, she could have assigned nursemaid. She even had those in a home that would have been worthy nursemaids. But she says, that's my role and that's my responsibility. That's a wonderful thing to know that a mother would step up and be the mother of the child and not be somebody, well, I ain't going to go there, but be a mother to the child instead of pushing the child off. Amen. Be a mother who teaches and trains. She gave that child part of her. Yep. But she's saying she was dried up, shriveled up. But God, how astonishing is our God. She said, who would have said? It was highly improbable. It was almost impossible that if anybody but God had said it, nobody would have even believed it. But God favors his children past not only our own thoughts, but past everybody else's expectation. Who would imagine that God should do so much for those who deserve so little. Only thing we deserve is rad. Who would have said that God would send his own son to die for us? Who would have said that God would send his spirit to daily sanctify us? His angels to watch over us. Who would have said that such great sins could be pardoned and should be pardoned? Or such means who mean spirits who come before God should be accepted? Who would have thought such worthless, worthless worms lower than dust? should be taken into covenant and communion with the great God of heaven. So my brothers and sisters, you can depend on God. He will come through. Wait on him. He will 
come through. I know that bad boy, that bad girl you've been praying for. You just keep looking to the hill. Sooner or later, what you put in them, it will come to fruition. Sooner or later, what you taught them will come back to their minds. So you keep on teaching. God's word will not come back void. God will come and see about his children. God will come through. Your breakthrough, brothers and sisters, is right around the corner. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. What if Abraham would have thrown up the towel? What if, what if, Brothers and sisters, don't quit. You might stumble. You might mess up. But hold on. God is on his way. Father, we thank you tonight for all of your many blessings. We thank you for your tender mercies. We pray now that you will bless your people. That we'll learn to be patient. And we'll learn to wait on you with confidence we learn to wait on you knowing that you are going to work it out. Help us to not fall out because of the storms and the, 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 the struggles in our life, but help us to lean and depend and wait on you. Help us, oh God, to be encouraged by the life of Senior Abraham and Senior Sarah. That if you can do that, you can do anything. And then the life of Jesus, that if you can step into your creation and be born in the flesh of man, you can do all things. So bless us with the understanding, God, that you are going to see us through. Whatever's in front of us that's causing us stumbling blocks, whatever's in front of us that's making us doubt you, Give us clarity now. Give us conviction and confidence that you are on the way. That in your time, you're going to move that hurdle. In your time, you're going to move that problem. In your time, you're going to move in a miraculous way. And we'll give you glory, honor, and praise. And we'll shout the victory now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. And may God keep you, my brothers and my sisters, be patient and wait. God will come through. We love you, one and all. And we'll see you on Facebook. We'll see you on Zoom. And we'll see you on conference call. Goodbye, Sister Seawood.